Hello, I'm Dr. Jeffrey Spiegel. I'm the Director of Advanced Facial Aesthetics Medical Practice in Chestnut Hill, Massachusetts, and Professor and Chief of Facial Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery at the Boston University School of Medicine. I was invited to review an article called Facial Feminization, Systematic Review of the Literature by Drs. Shane Morrison and the senior author is Dr. Paul Sederna, which is a review of the literature relating to facial feminization surgery. Facial feminization surgery has come to be increasingly uh, a topic of conversation in the plastic surgery world and in the lay public because of more and more press coverage relating to celebrities and other individuals who undergo these procedures. In essence, the procedures are a group of surgical procedures and operations which allow a face to look more feminine. While we get a lot of information from a face, it's not obvious what makes a face feminine. When you look at a face, you can tell if you recognize the person, if they are attractive, if they are young, what their ethnicity is, what their health status is, and their gender. Some of those are easy to explain. It's not hard to write down what are signs of disease in a face, what are signs of aging, and signs of ethnicity, for example. However, it is much more complicated to describe what makes a face look attractive, what makes a face familiar looking, and what makes a face masculine or feminine in appearance. If you see a woman with no hair, you don't think she's a man. And similarly, if you see a man with uh, long hair or uh, makeup or jewelry, you don't interpret that person as a woman. The authors in this paper have looked at a number of studies which describe the surgical techniques of facial feminization surgery, and they compiled the procedures into a list by area. I'm gonna review these for you briefly. The most significant one is probably the area of the forehead. The forehead, we're going to think of as the upper third of the face, really everything from the side of the eye up. The differences between male and female faces in this area are substantial. Male faces have a prominent brow bossing here, typically, which makes the eyes look smaller and darker, acts as a visor, shadowing the eyes and keeping light from reflecting off the eyes. Women have a flatter forehead, more arched eyebrows, and they tend to lack the hair uh, loss and temporal recession that's seen in a masculine hairline. In this procedure, we try to eliminate that temporal recession to the extent we can, open up the orbits to make the eyes larger, contour the eyebrows to the appropriate shape, and significantly shape the bone. We do a frontal cranioplasty, which is another term for shaping the bone of the forehead. There are different ways of doing this. Some people advocate just sort of burring it down, taking a drill and thinning it. Well, in my own research, we've shown that that really doesn't work the majority of the time, as 95% of people or so have a large frontal sinus here, the same sort of sinuses that you might think of when you get sinusitis or a sinus infection. So the sinus is an air pocket. If you try to drill away the bone over it, you're going to create a hole in the head. So typically what's required is to remove that bone contour it and set it back into the head. This is a very significant procedure and results in a large amount of improvement in the appearance of the face. Also, we want to get more light to the eyes by filling in the cheeks. Women have fuller cheeks to the side but also in the front. So filling in the cheeks in the front is important. Feminizing the nose is important. Women's noses tend to be, let's say, they have less detail, less character than men's noses. Women's noses, you want to think of as a thin, delicate, contourless structure in a sense. They're more boring than a man's nose, which has uh, bulbosities and twists and turns, um, which we tend to find unattractive in a woman's face. Additionally, we want light to come from the mouth. You want a bright mouth with a lot of tooth show. Sometimes we think about filling in the lips to make an attractive mouth. But really what we want to do is make sure that the teeth show at rest when the mouth is slightly open because this gives a lot of brightness from the mouth. It's also important to contour the chin and jaw. Women's faces tend to have a more slender jaw with a, a less wide chin. This is done in the same way uh, of contouring the jaw that is popular in uh, Southeast Asian countries and China wherein the uh, jaw is approached typically through the inside of the mouth and the bone can be contoured really around its entire aspect to create the feminine aesthetic. I do about four to six of these a week, uh, facial feminization procedures, and see yeah, each year many hundreds of people and over the years have done thousands and thousands of facial feminization procedures. What's most intriguing about these procedures is that the operations can be used to feminize any face and are extremely powerful at making any feminine face look attractive in addition to feminizing the masculine face. The authors have done a literature review and have given a good basic understanding of this to the general plastic surgery public. And for additional information, uh, other resources are available.